Hey love bugs and welcome back to my channel. It feels good to be doing this again. Ugh. I'm like really excited to just be back, to be doing fun things. I don't know if this video is going up first or if empties is going up first. I haven't decided yet. Probably whatever is the easiest to edit will go up first. Anyway, we're back. You know, Glamasmurf is back. I haven't been this done up in like over a month. Um, I got my coffee, you know, get your coffee out, whatever have you. I figured that a great way to kind of hop back into things outside of doing like empties, which I feel like that's kind of like channel maintenance, you know, keeping up with the things that I'm using. But I figured I would just pull out some things that I've been loving this year. Um, since I've been gone for a few months, like I haven't been talking to you guys about the things that I've been using, whether it be hair, makeup, skin, whatever. Like y'all don't really know much about what I've been doing any of that. So I figured I would sit down and talk to you guys about some of the products that I have been loving in 2022. There's a lot of gems in here and I'm encompassing everything. I have hair care, body care, fragrance, makeup, skincare, and some books. So if you're interested in just sitting down, hanging out with me, and checking out all the things that I have been loving in 2022, then just keep on watching. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Let's start with the hair care because I know that's what you guys want to know about first. Um, it's really only two products that have really taken up um, like a big space in my routine. They're the things that I've been going back to just all the time. So the first one, I also wanted to mention because I believe that the company is doing away with this one and another one. Um, that's the Chocolate Kinks and Curls Aloha Rose Clay Wash. This is to detox. It's supposed to um, help promote a healthy scalp and reduce frizz. So that's what she looks like. Um, I did a review on this, I believe when it came out. So there is a review on the channel of this clay wash. If you are new here and you are not familiar with Chocolate Kings and Curls clay washes, boo, you are missing out. Um, I started using her clay washes a year and a half ago. And I, I really haven't stopped. I've said this time and time again, the Chocolate Kings and Curls clay washes have kind of taken over like the place of co-washes in my routine. You can use these in a lot of different ways. You can use them on their own as like a light cleansing session. Um, I know a lot of people use them as pre-poos. I like to use these after I shampoo. So I'll shampoo my hair and then I'll go in with this. I'll let it do its thing. And I just always see a difference in my hair. It's not a necessary step, but it's a step that I enjoy. So I'll either use it that way or on days when like my hair isn't even remotely dirty, I will just go in with this like a co-wash. And it does what it needs to do. I love Chocolate Kinks and Curls clay washes in general because they all have slip. They all have a lot of moisture. They glide through the hair like butter. Um, this one in particular, I do find is really great for frizz. Like if you tend to kind of hop out the shower and your hair a little frizzy, it does help for me. Um, but I really love the moisture in this. I love the slip in this. It's not as cleansing as my top one, which is the Terra Black Clay and McKee Berry Clay Wash that came out last year, um, which I believe you can still get, but you can only get it in her clay kits. So you can't buy it on its own. I don't know if any of that has changed because like I said, I haven't really been on social media. I haven't been following like my staple brands the way I usually do. So I haven't really kept up with what anyone is doing like since Black Friday. But I repurchased this on Black Friday. And I think she recently announced that she's doing away with this as well as the green mint clay one, which I also have in my collection. So I don't know if I'll film with it or not. But I did want to give this an honorable shout out in this video since it is going to be saying bye bye. You guys can go pick it up and get it before it's gone. But this is just lovely. It makes my hair feel amazing. It's incredibly versatile in my routine. Um, I'm halfway through this one and I opened this at the beginning of the last month or like right near the end of February. So it's bomb. I love it. All of her clay washes are bomb, but this was like my first 
introduction to chocolate kinks and curls and it was my first love from chocolate kinks and curls so it's always going to have a special place in my heart i will live with the fact that it's gone <laughs> um like i've said before like at this point you just like i think we're just kind of getting to the point where it's like reformulations um discontinuations of things that we love like it's just it's always going to happen time goes on um you know you your your faves go you know this is one of my favorites but i also have other favorites so i will live but this has really like given me life over the last like month and a half so I had to put her in here because every time i've done my hair i have picked her up this one has also been like a common place in my routine um and i think really i i started picking this up and using it often simply because i was working on trying to do a review on the new products in this collection but I told you guys before like I had been trying to film and I just looked so depressed and like the videos just weren't good like I just didn't have the heart to post them um like who wants who wants to post videos of them looking miserable nobody so I scrapped those reviews I'm still going to do them um but you guys know when it comes to reviews I do try to like use the entire collection if I have it um, and so I have been using the Curl Origin Pink Superfoods Hydro Melt Hair Mask a lot. Actually, I, I finished one. <laughs> so I finished up a whole jar, um, opening another jar. This is like my third jar of this. So I've gone through two. I love it. It's good. This is, this entire collection is geared towards finer hair types. And I also have a review on this product, so I will either put it in the cards, put it in the description box. Um, but you guys have seen me use this on camera before. It is definitely lighter weight for a deep conditioner, but it it does so much. Like I have incredibly thick deep conditioners that don't do what this does for my hair. Um, some of the key ingredients in this are black currant, fig, and goji berry extracts. And it's supposed to hydrate, soften, and condition for fine um, and medium curly hair. This does everything that it says it will do and more. First of all, because of its thinness, it does have a lot of slip. If you're someone who doesn't like that ultra rich deep conditioner feel where it's like so thick that you're like, it's never going to go through my hair, um, then this is for you. If you like um, if you like condi conditioners that are very penetrative, that sink into your strands and just don't sit on top of your hair, this is for you. The slip on this is bomb. The moisture on this is bomb. My hair always feels so supple and just perfectly moisturized and soft, but not overly soft because you guys know my hair can tend to get a little too soft with some products. This does not do that for me. So if you're somebody who's in the market for something that's going to give you a lot of slip, a lot of hydration, a lot of moisture, it's just going to make your hair feel really supple and soft, I highly suggest this. Like I've said, it's not the type of feel that you usually expect from a hair mask, but it does wonders. I love this stuff. Um, I think this is my last jar, so I'm definitely going to have to repurchase um, soon because this has just been heavily in my routine. So I have been sent a lot of skincare over the last year um, to the point where it's almost like a little overwhelming. Um, and there's a lot that I've like given away to like family or like close friends or whatever. But I've been getting a lot of really interesting skincare that I've really wanted to try. So it's been like good for me. Um, let's talk about Dermalogica first because they've been sending me a lot of stuff and I've really been getting into the Dermalogica line. You guys know that I've like been die hard for like the same skincare brands for years. Um, and honestly, like there's no issue that I have with any of the brands that I have been using like Urban Skin RX or whatever. But real talk, like constantly being sent a lot of skincare that I like it's like convenient for me because now I don't have to go out and buy it all the time <laughs> um and especially with the way prices are going up on everything like it's nice to not have to worry about budgeting for my skincare so I just haven't been buying a lot of skincare because I've been getting sent a lot of my favorites so you know and I mean the, the only thing is like you can talk about some of your faves for years and they'll they'll never even reach out and say thank you so you know 
I'm using what I have and what I have is working for me, which is nice. So I have a couple of things from Dermalogica. The first one is the Daily Microfoliant. This is good. I have been curious about this for a while. I can't remember. I, I really don't use a lot of physical exfoliants. I'm more of a chemical exfoliant kind of girl. Um, mostly because a lot of the ones that are on the market are just too harsh. This is in the form of a powder. So you can see it comes out right there. And that's what she looks like. It's a powder and you add water to it. And it has like these fine, very, very fine granules. You add water to it and it foams up. And that is what you use to exfoliate your skin. And y'all, my skin loves it. Um, I have relatively congested skin, especially around my nose. I'll get incredibly congested around here and like on my forehead, even like right in here, these creases along the bridge of my nose. I have very congested skin, I always have. So either having some type of chemical or physical exfoliant in my routine at some point has always been very helpful. This right here is bomb. One, because it's gentle, um, I can use this and my face isn't like a tomato when I rinse it off. This is incredibly gentle and incredibly effective. It doesn't have any kind of scent and it makes my skin feel brand new, like, it's just like, it, it, it kind of feels like a quick fix. Like it makes my skin feel so good. It makes my skin incredibly smooth. It really helps, you know, with the gunk. Cause sometimes I feel like even though I do use actives at night, sometimes even then I feel like I still have like some really annoying buildup like right in here. Like I don't always feel like, I think maybe it's just the shape of my nose. I don't always feel like everything gets there and does what it needs to do. Um, and this right here, helps a lot. I love this. Um, they sent this to me at the beginning of the year and I haven't put it down. And then like my, my straight up like favorite from them right now, like they sent this to me when this product launched. I was, I hate that I was like not on the internet when it launched, but um, this is the new circular hydration serum. And this is supposed to be their advanced hydration serum. It is supposed to kickstart skin's hydration cycle. It's a long lasting serum that immediately floods skin with hydration, replenishes from within, and helps prevent future hyd hydration evaporation. Um, and you're just supposed to apply this to a clean face um, and your neck after toning, before moisturizing. So I like usually, if I'm using this, I will use my Dermalogica toner. Like I'll do a full, basically Dermalogica routine tone with this and add this y'all when I tell you my skin has definitely been like like dehydrated has like not even been in the vocabulary okay um and yes I, I drink a lot of water um, I try to be good with that too but this right here has definitely been giving my skin life I have really been on like a hydration serum kick for a while, those were never really in my routine. I was like more so focused on actives and stuff, but I think especially now that my skin has definitely become more sensitive to a lot more things when it comes to actives, um, I've been focusing more so on moisture. This is a very thin serum. It's very lightweight. I just add like four drops to my face after my toner. Um, and this is bomb. So basically how I use this, I'll tone, I'll add the hydration serum, and then I will go in with my, um, four, five, six skin, sevenly delight serum. And y'all, my skin, it's been glowing. Having a hydration serum in my routine in general, I've noticed has really helped my skin in general, but this one is really, really nice. I love it. Really happy they sent this to me. Um, I haven't checked the price on this. I kind of don't want to because I know it's it's probably going to be at least $60, maybe more. <laughs> um, but I will definitely be purchasing more because I really enjoy this. The only other hydration serum that I have liked almost as much as this is the one from Herbivore. I think it's the 
the Cloud Serum. That one is really nice. Um, it's gonna be in my empties. I don't, like I said, I don't know if the empties is gonna be up before this or after, but that's the only one that has come close to this one. Um, so I like to use this in the morning before I apply um, whatever active I'm using that day. But I also use this at night too. So this basically is my first step before whatever other serum I'm applying. And my skin loves it. I also like that it's not sticky. Like, it doesn't make my skin feel gross. And I can use this and I can use another serum, apply my moisturizer, whatever, and I can still put makeup on and it doesn't pill. One of my biggest problems with like daytime skincare is that a lot of the skincare that I find that I like um, will make my makeup like separate or it will pill up um, and the entire like application process will be ruined. So that is definitely one thing that I try to be mindful of. And this works really, really well um, just with my other skincare products, but also with my makeup routine, which is important for me. So I absolutely love this serum. It's bomb. I highly suggest picking it up if you're looking for a good moisture serum. Shout out to Dermalogica for sending this to me. Um, I will have everything in this video listed in the description box below in case you want to check this out. Stuff is surprising because I have two facial moisturizers. I have not veered away from like my Urban Skin RX moisturizers and my Belief moisturizers for years. Like for the longest, those were the only two that I was using. And I started trying other things cause they were being sent to me and I found some gems y'all. Let's start off with daytime. This is the Glow Recipe Plum Plump Hyaluronic Cream. <sighs> y'all, this is my new favorite daytime moisturizer. First of all, can we just get into the packaging? Like it's a, it's a plum. Like it's a, it's a little glass plum. Like it, it, it even has a little booty crack. <laughs> I love this so much. First of all, you don't need a lot of it. It spreads so evenly across the skin, sinks into your skin beautifully. It does not leave any type of film residue on your skin. It doesn't pill up. This plays well with a lot of different products, which I enjoy, and it also wears really, really well underneath makeup. This is on my skin right now, underneath the makeup that I am currently wearing. Um, Y'all, every time I put this on my face, I have, like, since I've been using this, I have tried to switch to other daytime moisturizers, and my skin never feels the same when I'm wearing something else. I don't know what it is about this, but it makes my skin feel so smooth. It really does make my skin feel plump, soft, supple, a little dewy, but not greasy. Like this is just bomb. And it wears really, really well underneath um, my SPF too. So I can layer this with other products and it does very, very well. It doesn't irritate my skin. It just leaves my skin so hydrated. And Lord, let me tell you, these two on my face, I have both of these on my skin right now. Um, They've been, <laughs> when I tell you my skin has been moisturized to the gods and not in a greasy way, not in an acne, like pore clogging way. Like my skin has just been incredibly supple and plump, um, but not oily, greasy or nasty. The other thing that I love about it is that it's refillable. So this, like you can kind of see in here, there's a little cartridge and you just twist this off and you can just buy the refillable cartridge to put in here, which I think is great because one, like packaging like this, I hate having to throw it away. Um, a lot of recycling companies don't recycle glass because one, it's expensive and two, it's dangerous for workers. So a lot of companies don't recycle glass anymore. Um, so I really appreciate it when a product is glass, but it's something that is refillable. I can just get a refillable cartridge and whatever that cartridge is, is a plastic that I can recycle. So I really enjoy that. I like that I'm not going to have to keep repurchasing this little guy unless like I break it or something. Last up for skincare, this is for nighttime. Um, you guys know I've been using like the same like nighttime skincare for a while. Specifically, the Belief um, Aqua Bomb Sleeping Mask. That's one of my favorite sleeping masks. I will tell you guys, I have barely touched it in like the last two months, which is crazy for me because 
for the last like three or four years, I have been using that every other night consistently. And it's still one of my favorite products. But this launched this year and the brand sent it to me. This is the Pharmacy 10% Niacin in my Night Mask. It's supposed to smooth and refine pores. And it says it visibly refines texture and pores and helps strengthen skin's moisture barrier with 10% niacinamide and 3% panthenol. Now, look, I don't know a lot about niacinamide. Um, me going on about this is not really having to do with the niacinamide. I know very little about it. Um, the only thing that I really do know is that niacinamide is one of those hyped up ingredients right now and it's been a little controversial because a lot of brands are like putting these ridiculous amounts of niacinamide in products or like marketing like huge amounts like 20 percent niacinamide but like you only really need like five percent niacinamide for it to be effective um it's, it's a lot that i'm not i'm not i'm not really into all that but this mask feels so good on my skin um i find this mask to be incredibly calming and soothing uh especially on days when I'm out, I'm working out, come home, my skin just, whenever I'm active, like I get really flush. Um, and sometimes my skin can feel like really, really hot, kind of achy, kind of tender. Um, when I was, when I had my last job, that would happen a lot when I was at work and my skin would get really, really sensitive between that and then the mask and then the actives that I was using. So I had a lot of issues with skin sensitivity and this is incredibly calming, very moisturizing. So I use this like every other night. It's not sticky on my skin and it doesn't end up smeared all over my pillow. A lot of times with sleeping masks, you put them on and they dry down and it feels like there's like a, a layer of like dried gel on your face. I don't like that. I, I, I don't like that. <laughs> It's uncomfortable, it's gross. And then a lot of times like you wake up the next morning and it's like kind of wrinkled up on your face. Like it didn't actually sink into your skin. I don't like that. I don't want that. <laughs> um, this sinks into my skin, um, but you can still kind of feel that there is like a layer there just kind of like hanging on, but it's not gross. It's not oily. It doesn't end up on my pillow. Like I don't, it, I don't wake up and feel like I have like a mask of skincare on my pillow the next day. This feels so good on the skin. Um, I don't know about the whole like um, texture thing. I, I use actives at night, so I can't say whether this is really helping with my texture, but I know how beautifully plump and soft and just fresh my skin looks in the morning every time I use this and I know how good it feels when I apply it. Like it is so calming to the skin. Um, so that is why I've been loving this. But that's all the skincare that I've been using. It's been treating my face very, very well. And I'm loving it. I have one makeup item. I haven't been really wearing makeup. I haven't been trying out a lot of makeup. I haven't been buying any makeup. None of that. <laughs> but this was sent to me um, this is from the brand One Size. I think this is Patrick Star, you know, the beauty guru, YouTuber. Um, Y'all know who Patrick Star is. Even if you don't think you know who he is, you know who he is. Um, he came out with a brand in, was it 2020 or 2019? Um, and he's slowly been adding products to his line. And he released the Turn Up the Base um, BBB Cream. So it's a triple B cream. Um... And it's the Beauty Blur Balm. And they sent this to me. They um, let me pick out the color. So I got this in Dark One Neutral. Be the ultimate blur boss with buttery, bouncy, smooth skin. Texture be gone. And it says to apply to a clean, primed, or moisturized face. Y'all, this stuff right here. This is what I have on my face right now. Barely any powder. Like I did like a very light set. The first time I wore this, I didn't prime my skin. I didn't even think about the fact that I didn't prime my skin. I just did it on accident. So I just put this on top of moisturizer. I didn't set it and my skin looked amazing. My mom was like, what is on your face? And I was like, it's this new like beauty balm that I got, this BB cream. And she was like, huh? Um, the dispenser is different because it has like this 
like pop top and you squeeze it out that way. Um, this does have like a relatively, it's a thicker consistency and I was worried about that. I was like, this seems like it's gonna be cakey, it's gonna be heavy. Um, first things first, you cannot feel this on your face at all. Like I have on a full face of makeup and I feel like I have nothing on my skin. I feel like I just have moisturizer on my skin. Like it doesn't, you can't feel it at all. It feels amazing. Um, the shade match isn't 100%, but I think it's about as close as I'm going to get. I haven't been out in the sun as much as I usually am, but I think that this is pretty good just considering that the, you know, the shade range is limited because it is like a beauty balm situation. But this has a lot of coverage. So all I did was color correct underneath my eyes and then a little bit around my mouth. You guys know I always color correct around my mouth and right up under here because I have really dark circles. And then I didn't color correct anything else. I do have a lot of dark marks from fading acne and stuff like that. Um, put this right on top. You can't, I mean, when you apply this, it's it just melts into your skin. I apply it with a beauty blender, but you can definitely apply it with your fingers. I mean, the, the base is speaking for itself, guys. Like this, it says turn up the base and it does. They have a concealer in this range and now I really, really want to try it because this stuff is bomb. Um, so far, I haven't had any breakouts with it. I've been testing it out for the last couple of weeks just to see how it feels. I haven't worn it with a mask because I've told you guys I don't wear my mask with my makeup. It's gross to me. I don't like it. Um, so I don't do that. I can't tell you. I can't vouch for that. But I do know that the, the first day that I wore this, I did not set it. I did not prime. My mom touched my face and nothing came off. Nothing. I told her, I was like, touch my face. And she was like, it feels matte. But it's not cakey on the skin. It doesn't feel dry. Like, it doesn't feel matte at all. And I tend to avoid a lot of, like, super matte products. I don't like drying my skin out. Y'all, th this is nice. This is absolutely beautiful. And my skin loves it. So if you've been looking for something like this, something that has that BB cream effect, but is going to give you, like, a little bit more coverage, like, you're still a coverage girl at heart, um... I highly suggest this because it still looks like healthy skin at the end of the day. It doesn't look like too much. I highly suggest it. I don't know how deep the shade range goes, but I do remember seeing quite a few shades after mine when they asked me to pick out shades. So next we have body care, fragrance, and then I'm going to share like a couple of my favorite reads with you guys. I told y'all to get a drink, you know, something. You know how we do around here. So... Um, you guys know I have my usual faves, Butter Baby is always on deck, um, Butter Me Up Goods, always on deck. During Black Friday, if you remember my Black Friday haul, I picked up, um, quite a bit from NOLA Skin Essentials, and one of the collections that I got was the Brown Sugar Babe Body Collection. So I picked up the shower gel and the scrub, which are in my bathroom currently. Um, but I also got the whipped lotion and the body butter. So I have been loving both of these. The whipped lotion feels absolutely divine. How I use this, I use the whole set together. I will cleanse with the body cleanser. I will scrub my body down with the scrub. Um, and then I will apply a thin layer of the whipped lotion and then I will allow that to sink in and then I will apply a thin layer of the, bottom, the body butter. I've really been enjoying doing a lightweight lotion. Usually I do something fragrance free unless the scent matches. And then I will add my butter on top. Y'all, this butter is so rich and creamy and the lotion is rich and creamy as well, but it is lightweight. It really sinks into the skin. This fits right into my hydrate and moisturize routine when it comes to my body. I absolutely love it, but the smell is so yummy. It's not like what I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be like a, a dark, like caramel, like warm vanilla sugar type scent, but this is like a really sweet, like candied orange blossom kind of scent. I love it and it's strong you put this on and you are going to smell it all day 
this smells so good y'all it smells amazing i have a full body routine up on instagram with these two products if i can strip the audio and put it on here as a short then i will do that if you guys would like to see that because i don't think i can use the audio that was on there but i love those two products they're amazing they make my skin literally buttery soft smooth and they make me smell amazing and they pair perfectly with my scent of the day and one of the fragrances that I have in this video. I have only really been wearing two fragrances for the last couple of months. Um, just because I haven't really been going anywhere. Y'all know I've kind of been in, I've been in my depression bubble. I haven't really been going anywhere, so I haven't cared. <laughs> um, and so when I have been wearing fragrance, it's been something um, a little bit more light, comforting, airy, all that good stuff. So... The one that I've been wearing the most and is also my scent of the day is Love Don't Be Shy from Killian. She is a popular girl. We all know why she's popular because it got out that this was Rihanna's scent. I'm telling you right now, Riri ain't wearing this no more because we have talked this shit to death, but it is so good. It's one of my favorite fragrances right now, honestly. Um, I picked this up during the Sephora sale. Um the fall sale last year and I'd had one of the travel sizes and I was I was gonna get another travel size and I was like that makes no sense why spend another $50 on a travel size when I could just get the full thing y'all can see she has a dent I'm like right here on it I've been wearing it a lot um this lasts a good six to seven hours on my skin this is a really beautiful marshmallow orange blossom sweet pretty candied kind of scent um I feel like this is really really great for like Netflix and chill it's perfect for like a first date it's one of those that I feel like you can definitely make your signature if you're really into those like sweet dainty girly kind of princess like scents um this is definitely a good one to have in your collection I've just really been enjoying this I feel like I I love this scent, so I wear it more for me than I do for anybody else. But on the days when I do leave the house and I wear this, I definitely get compliments. It's one of those where people have to like, like you walk by people and they smell you. Or like they kind of have to be a little bit in your bubble um, to smell you. But I feel like this perfect. Like first date, more intimate occasions, like this is perfect for that. So I love this fragrance. And this really like pairs perfectly with this the last time i checked this was still on the nola site i know that these were like special edition products i don't know if they've gotten rid of them i haven't seen anything about them getting rid of them i'm sure they'll probably be up on their site until they sell out at least um but they smell absolutely phenomenal together like it, it smells like they were made for each other and i actually featured these two together on instagram it smells so good like if you want to smell like the most rich decadent like put together like sweet girl love don't be shy is it but with the brown sugar babe stuff like it mm, comes together beautifully this fragrance has gotten like a lot of shit like it got a lot of shit when it came out um and this is kaoli eden juicy apple 01 so i picked this up um right before christmas i did a i think i showed this in a vlog i went to sephora um, and they just happen to have this in my Sephora. They never have Kayali fragrances in my Sephora. Um, so I wasn't checking to smell this in person, but I, I found out that they had it. I went in, I went to go smell it. And one of the girl, there was a girl over there sniffing it and she sprayed it. And before I even got over to where it was, it washed it over to me. Mind you, I had a mask on had my um KN95 on and it wafted over to me and I just walked over and got a bottle and put it in my bag they were really looking at me crazy that day because I just walked in and picked up like five fragrances <laughs> checked out and left and they were just like <laughs> but this is so good this fragrance has gotten a lot of shade for it being what it is. And it's just weird to me because I don't like, based on the scent description, I don't know why people thought that this was going to be like some out of the box scent. Like, I don't know why people thought that this was going to be like the most niche fragrance ever. Um, I feel like people get into, this isn't shade to anybody because like, 
I, I, but I feel like the, it's like this every time when like certain aspects of beauty start to get really, really hyped up. People hop into communities and they get so full of themselves. And it's like, you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't even know who you're talking about. Like you, like just calm down. Like it's not that big of a deal. If you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't. You don't have to shit on people for liking it. You don't have to shit on the company because you don't like it. Like it's whatever. Um, but I love this fragrance. This fragrance to me is actually kind of nostalgic. So this has notes of apple, there is musk, there's a little bit of vanilla in here, and it also has a very strong berry note. I would say like a strawberry, raspberry, blackberry kind of blend. So I actually get more of the berries than I do the apple. But this has like a really nice like honey crisp apple with musk. It's a little clean, but it's juicy and sweet. Um, and that vanilla makes this a little creamy. This reminds me of, if you guys like, if any of you are around my age or older, y'all remember like back in the day when like jello salads were a thing? I know I'm not the only person who remembers this, but we had um, a local grocer called Ucrops um, when I lived in Virginia. If you're from that area and you're like a 90s baby like me, then you you remember Ucrops. Um, and they had these like jello salad things and it was like layers of like jello with fruit um and then like a layer of like a sweet cream and then like more jello with the fruit and then like sweet cream and like more jello with the fruit and i used to love that when i was a kid like so good um i i don't think people make that anymore like <laughs> i think the whole jello craze was like something that spawned out of the 80s and then like kind of died in like the like early 2000s but this reminds me of that, that combination of that like creamy vanilla with those sweet berries. That's what it reminds me of. And when I asked my mom to smell it, she was like, wait a minute, it does smell like that. It smells so good. It's sweet and it's creamy and it's simple, but also like kind of special in a way. I get a lot of compliments when I wear this. Um, I wear this pretty much every time I go to physical therapy now, um, and I wear it, like, usually I'll stop and go to the store or whatever, like, take care of errands after physical therapy. Um, I always get compliments when I go to physical therapy, and I always get compliments when I go to the store after physical therapy. This smells amazing. Guys really like it. Um, I feel like there's nothing wrong with having a basic scent. Like, I, I feel like people try to shade other people for being, like, basic. But I also feel like you need to have something that's not... Like, I don't always want to smell like a Tom Ford. I don't always want to smell like an Anishio perfume. Like, sometimes I just want to smell good. I want to smell sweet. I want to smell clean. I don't need everything to be special um, all the time. I don't need everything to be overly artistic all the time. I don't have to overly spray this. The projection is great for me. The lasting power is great and it makes me smell amazing. I find this to be nostalgic. I find it to be comforting. It's sweet. It's a little decadent but not overly indulgent. I love this. So if you have been considering it, you're someone who you just like you just like to smell good. You're not looking for anything overly complicated. You just want to know you're going to put this on, you're going to smell good. Boom. I feel like this is definitely one of those gals and the price point is not that bad. I don't know why people act like Kaylee is so expensive because it's not um especially not when us girls are out here paying um like $240 for a 1.7 ounce of Killian. I'm just saying like I <laughs> <laughs> I think people just like to hate on Kayali and I don't know why um but yeah just just get over it if you don't like it just move on it's okay you're not going to like everything that everybody else likes they're not always going to like what you like but it's cool but these are the two that I've been wearing the most I've definitely been going towards more sweet fruity musky marshmallowy type fragrances I find them comforting and I just find them to be easy to put on and wear um and not as intimidating and daunting as a lot of my usual fragrance picks. Last but not least, let's talk about some books. Um, a lot of you guys have asked me to talk more about what I've been reading. Because I've been reading a lot. Like, that's kind of been my escapism through everything that's been going on. 
Um, when I just feel down, I pick up a book. <laughs> I've finished a lot of different series. I'm more than halfway through my reading goal for the year. <laughs> um, I've read more books in the last like two, three months than I did the entirety of 2021. Like no lie. Um, but I've been getting more into fantasy. Um, some YA and then a lot of adult because eventually I was like, you know, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna have something to read, then I'm just gonna have to get over it, right? Like, I'm just gonna have to get over the sex, right? Um, and honestly, I'm not even mad at it. So the the series that I've been the most in love with uh, is the Throne of Glass series from Sarah J. Moss. Um, this series isn't new, but it, it's new to me. Um, it is, for the most part, a young adult series up until the last, like, two books. So I just finished reading um, Empire of Storms. This is the book where it stops being young adult. Just for those of you who, like, you care about that or you get books for your kids, like, this definitely is the point where it's like, this is not, it's not young adult anymore. Um, the sex is explicit. And there's a lot of violence in this book. Not sexual violence, but there's a lot of violence in this book. This series is so good. Um, to sum it up, it's definitely uh, in the fantasy realm. And the book chronicles the main character, the main female character, who is known at, she's known for being an assassin. Um, and you go on this journey with her, finding out that she basically is like, the head bitch like she she's that bitch of this world um and her and her friends go on a quest to save their realm it's a lot there's romance um there is action if you like that kind of thing then you will enjoy it like I said the majority of it is young adult um so I just finished Empire of Storms I cried a lot reading this book um, and then I also finished Tower of Dawn, which is supposed to be like a tandem read. So you're supposed to read these two together um, because this chronicles the main character and all of the other important side characters. But this is specifically about um, two other side characters. So this this book in particular does not include the main character at all, but it is really, really good. Um, I really enjoyed it. I cried reading this one too. Um, the side character in this book, a lot of people apparently don't like him, but I have a soft spot for him and I've been rooting for his character development. So I'm happy that we got this book. So there's one book left in the series and I'm, I'm dreading reading it because I know I'm going to cry like a baby while I'm reading it <laughs> because I know that it's going to be a lot. Um, but this series is really, really good. If you like fantasy, if you like action, um, it, 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 it's really good. I think I explained that series well at all, but I, I find it hard to talk about some series without spoiling the book. Like it's kind of hard to tell you guys more about the main character without spoiling the book for you. So, you know. The last series is definitely like dark adult romance. This ain't for your kids. Um, but it's really, really good. I'm not really into... I've never been into smut, but most of the adult romance out here is smut, so like you, you just got to get over it. Um, some of it is really well done and some of it isn't, and <laughs> you just kind of have to figure out what you can deal with and what you can't. Um, but I got into the Touch of Darkness series from, from Scarlet St. Clair. I'm really into um, Greek mythology, Roman mythology anybody's mythology I'm into it like I'm, I'm here for it uh so this is a retelling of Hades and Persephone I really enjoy this I think that the author does a really really good job of retelling the story in a modern way but also giving us a lot of the characters I actually really like Persephone's character I think that she has been through a lot and she's been thrust into the real world and She's just trying to figure it out and she's also trying to navigate the fact that she is in love with someone that she's not supposed to love um, and someone that is incredibly difficult because I can imagine that being in love with the God of the Dead is difficult. But I also really appreciate the author because she also gave us the Touch of Darkness series 
from Haiti's point of view. And I highly suggest if you get into touch into a touch of darkness, you got to read a game of fate. It's really, really good. Um, so even though this is Haiti's point of view, the stories are not exactly the same. It's not a copy and paste retelling. Um, so you really do get to understand what was happening on Haiti's end. You see more of his life. You get more of the other gods that are in the story. The side characters are awesome, by the way. Like, I love Hermes and I love Hecate. Like, they're both amazing. Um, but you learn a lot more about Hades and what is going through his mind. Um, and you just also kind of learn, you just learn so much more about what is happening on the side. And it makes so much sense. Um, the second book in the Hades saga is coming out at the end of May. So that one is called A Game of Retribution. And from what the, what the author has stated, it's not purely um, going to be a retelling of the second book. So there's already three books out, um, A Touch of Darkness, um, A Touch of Ruin, and A Touch of Malice. And I think the fourth book is supposed to come out next year. So now you'll have A Game of Fate, A Game of Retribution. And I think she said there's going to be a third book for the Haiti saga. Um, but I do suggest reading them in tandem if you can. Um, so technically you would read A Touch of Ruin and then you would read A Game of Retribution when that comes out. Um, I'll put, I'll put the reading list down below for you guys so it's not confusing. That is it for this video. It was long in true third eye angel fashion, but I'm happy to be back. You guys know I love to sit down and talk with you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what are some of the things that you've been loving hair care, especially hair care wise, because I'm like, I'm behind on everything. I don't know what's been coming out. I don't know what anybody been doing. Um, I'm just here. <laughs> At this point, I'm just watching my boo all things Moelle to find out what's new because she's been reviewing a lot of new stuff. If you don't watch her, go check her out because she's bomb. That's my girl. I love her. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.